Hi everybody, my name is Patrick McCarthy. I'm Head of Artistic Planning for the Ulster Orchestra uh, and really delighted to be joined today by Maxim Rizanov, who conducts and is soloist as well for us this week in Friday night's concert. Maxim, welcome back to Belfast. Thank you very much. It's very, very lovely to be here. It's a few years since we've had you here, but really great to be back uh, and to have you with us for our first proper season concert of 2022. So three works uh, in Friday night's programme, all centred around, around you and, uh, and Schubert, I suppose, a composer that, um, that you've made central to your output over the last 10 years. So tell us a little bit about um, the Schubert work that features you as a soloist, because it's quite an unusual one uh, in that it's not a, a yes. conventional concerto. Uh, yes, well, this particular work is written for an instrument that doesn't exist anymore. I mean, one can find it uh, probably in the museum, uh, but um, it's, it was written for an instrument called arpeggione, which was a sort of a mix between a guitar and cello, perhaps. Uh, it would have six strings and it would be um, tuned to a certain key. And on the six strings, it would be much easier to actually play an arpeggio, and that's why it's called. It was called arpeggione because it was it was fretted, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you would just. Uh, it would. I don't know. I actually, I have never tried it, <laughs> but I think you would you would just press one finger, and then the A major would just sound <laughs> something like that. Wow. Um, How but, straightforward. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but that's the only uh, work that we know was written for this instrument. Uh, that stayed in history. Um, and so um, somehow viola players and also cellists actually, but mostly viola players um, sort of conquered that piece and now it belongs to our uh, repertoire. And not only that, because originally it's uh, for arpeggio and piano, uh, but not only that we played in recitals, we now also played um, uh, in concerts like, like this one with orchestra because um, a very good friend of mine, uh, Dobrinka Tabakova, who is a composer I've studied at the Guildhall uh, at the same time with, um, she's, she's made this orchestration for viola uh, or cello uh, with strings, and it's just really, really handy and very well made. Uh, she's, she's such a talented uh, person, and she's, she's made very, great orchestration of this. She's certainly an extremely talented composer in her own right. We featured a piece of hers last year in our, in our digital season, so really great to be able to bring back something else of hers. Um, tell us something about the piece that, that opens the concert, yes. which um, is another, another yes. unusual one for us. It's, it's quite unusual. It, it has um, unus uh, unusual instrumentation. It's by Missy Mazzoli, who is an American composer. And her idea behind it is a creation of the solar system. Uh, so what she does is that she takes little motifs, some sort of dust or some kind of materials in, in the cosmos that are looping around and then grouping into bigger uh, bodies. And then uh, uh, by the end of the piece, we kind of have um, our solar system with planets and... and uh, and the sun and every, everything what, what is in it. And she's using, for, for those little materials, she's using interesting uh, things like glissandos from uh, note to note in the strings, and also then you will hear in trombone and other instruments. Then she's using the Baroque element, uh, which sounds a little bit like a... And then it becomes a... As a sort of a longer and different rhythms. Um, and most interestingly, that uh, the, some of the uh, brass players will be playing harmonicas. <laughs> harmonicas, yeah. yes. They, they, are this, they are these small metallic <laughs> instruments that um, will, it will bring a beautiful, strange effect <laughs> to the sound uh, of, 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 the, of the orchestra. And 
you are there for a treat if you come. <laughs> it's full of amazing colour. Yeah. I was really reading this morning, I hadn't realised that there was a sort of double play on the title Symphonia, that we think right. of Symphonia as a piece for, for chamber orchestra. But, but uh, in the old Latin, Latin it, it means hurdy gurdy, right? It's, yeah. a, it's a backpipe. So, so, so there's, there are many effects uh, and meanings put into this 10 or 11 minutes uh, work, and it's very effective and... Uh, very interesting to follow through, I think. Yeah, I, I kind of like that, that we've ended up perhaps accidentally with two pieces that, that sort of reflect back on, on lost instruments on the, the, the hurdy-gurdy in the <laughs> arpeggione, which That's right. <laughs> on the surface have very little else in common, but, um, yes. but, but that makes a really interesting first half, I think. Um, so part two is, is Tchaikovsky's Fourth Symphony. So The I mean, Fate, yes. Tchaikovsky, mm, what to say, uh, uh, is... Of course, extremely known work uh, by the legendary composer, Russian composer. It's full of conflict uh, between, you know, uh, desperation and love and a sort of human beginning. Uh, he uses a lot of valse uh, genre um, to, you know, to go closer to the soul. Uh, through through the vaults, it's it's not necessarily a dance, and one of the most famous uh, uh, melodies in the second movement, uh, given to oboe and then at the end to bassoon, is one of the most gorgeous uh, uh, melodies that's ever been written, really. Mm -hmm. And you are there for a treat in the third movement. You'll see uh, a sort of A B A form to a to a movement, and the A. Uh, in the beginning and the ending is pizzicato only, so the, the so the the strings will just go only pizzicato for a while, and it's quite funny how then they have to pick up their bows again and uh, a bit of an action there. And the middle part is very dancey and extremely Russian, and um, the last movement is fast and loud. It's a huge uh, peasant celebration where Tchaikovsky appears to be in the middle of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's... Yeah. And I think with all of those moments of... Because there are moments of, of introspection and, and angst and so on, uh, it is ultimately an optimistic piece uh, and a great orchestral showcase. And for anyone who's, who's perhaps not been to an Ulster Orchestra concert before or an orchestral concert before, thinking about what to do you know, post-pandemic as we, we start to, to look to re-emerge from this, this long hibernation. No better piece, I think, to, to introduce you to all the colours of the orchestra and, and indeed, the indeed. drama of a, of a full it's symphony. Absolutely. So well written. And again, I think the, con the conflict between the personal drama and then the celebration at the end is, is just uh, unique. And you're going to do it all. You're going to conduct, you're going to uh, play, you're going to conduct. Yes, ah. yes. Uh, well, uh, for me, this has been a sort of a natural thing to do for a few years now, and uh, I, I think uh, as long as I'm sort of within the music and within the process, uh, I don't mind anymore whether it's to produce the sound with a bow or to produce it with a baton and to have this incredible communication with the orchestra. Uh, because if, if you're just a soloist who comes and plays with a conductor, it's always a communi it, the communication is always through the conductor. It will be almost in, uh, sort of mm, <laughs> unrespectable to, to speak directly to the orchestra if, uh, if I would just turn around and ask for certain musical things. We always have to apply to the conductor. Could you possibly ask this and this and this? Mm -hmm. and this? But here I have a chance to completely feel free, and there's no one standing. <laughs> I'm the conductor, so I, yeah. I have to say, yeah, it is, it's quite challenging because uh, you'll see me basically doing two professions at the time. But uh, for me, it's normal, and I, I, I think it's quite a showcase actually. As well. I like that. That the, the, really, you're you're still making music, just two different ways of, of of doing exactly the same thing. And I also think musicians, orchestral musicians, naturally respond very well to someone who who they sort of recognise. They recognise something of themselves uh, in the soloist as well. Absolutely. So to, to translate that to direction as well makes it a very sort of natural thing for them to be able to engage with. That's right. I, I, yes, I, I agree completely. 
um, just yesterday in the rehearsal, we were going through the Schubert, and I felt how orchestra really, really willingly tried to respond to all the dynamics and the, the rubatos that I was trying to make. And then literally from the second playthrough, we had it. Yeah. Because yeah. I think part of that perhaps is that they're having to rely much more on what they hear from you than, than necessarily what they see from That's the conductor. Right. So it, yeah. it makes for much more natural music making. Yes, indeed. Maxim, this is, this is really great. Uh, I'm sorry we don't hear more of the viola as a, as a solo instrument, um, but you've agreed to play something for us uh, now, which is wonderful. What are you going to play? I'll play uh, one movement of the uh, Bach cello suite uh, in G major. It's the first suite, uh, and I'll play the Sarabande. Maxime, thank you very much for this conversation today, which we've really enjoyed. Um, we really look forward to seeing you all at 7.45 Friday night in the Ulster Hall with the Ulster Orchestra, um, back in full flow to start 2022 with a bang um, with our star soloist and play director, Maxime Rizanov.